Oh, this feels very official. <laughs> <laughs> when you guys start, you guys like bow. Yeah. Okay. To how do we do that? Uh, yeah. Good. Good. All right. Now this is making me uncomfortable. So everybody. Come <laughs> Nice to meet you guys. Uh, met almost everybody, I think. And I appreciate everybody being here. Um, mainly, I appreciate Professor Bill over there for, uh, for having me and for George for organizing so much of this. So this is fantastic. I mean, you just, yeah, thank you. See you guys later. Thank you. <laughs> um, so I'm, I'm going to try to bring you guys some, some interesting stuff to share with you today. Um, if you guys don't know about me or... Uh, I guess if you're here, you probably do. But anyway, I'm going to introduce myself. My name is Eli and I have been doing jiu-jitsu for a very long time. Uh, I'm not quite as long as Professor Bill and a very different background. But um, my lineage, I come up from uh, Hoist Gracie. And I'm a third degree now. I just got my third degree. Um, my belt looks funny because I don't have the red sleeve. We do the navy sleeves under hoist. Um, that's a whole other story. I can explain to that later. But um, yeah, I've been doing this for since like the early 90s, I guess. And I started out in Japanese Jiu-Jitsu and then made the transition over to more of the Gracie Jiu-Jitsu, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu stuff. I've done other martial arts and stuff too, but uh, Jiu-Jitsu is kind of where my heart is. And uh, so I'm kind of old school in a lot of my mentality, but then at the same time, I really appreciate and admire a lot of the evolution of the art. So what I like to do whenever I'm showing stuff is kind of focus on like a, a more principle-based approach as best I can. So I get a little bit analytical about some things um, to the best of my understanding, because like I was talking with uh, Professor Bill, it's like, I'm a very slow learner. Like I'm, I'm, not, I'm not very good at stuff. So whenever I have to learn something, it takes me so long to learn it. By the time I do, I've learned it in kind of a step-by-step -step process that I can, I can at least explain it pretty well by the end of it. So that's kind of where we're gonna take things. Um, I'm gonna take an approach today for the, this E portion today. I want to talk about, well, in both portions, we're going to talk about some structural things. To me, structure is a big deal. If you can understand how structure works, if you can understand kind of how to maintain, to build structure, how to dismantle structure, how to deconstruct structure, then you're going to be able to really move the person around. You're going to be able to move yourself efficiently around the person. So um, that hopefully will make more sense as we go. If any of you guys during any part of the process, we're, we're recording, but like if you guys want to record anything, I'm wide open. If I establish close guard, I'd like to have him down. I want to have him broken posture. Right now, he's got really good posture and structure, right? His structure right now is, is about as perfect as he can get it because he has a, tri a triangular kind of base. He's got a pyramid structure. So he's got essentially three points of base that he's sitting on. His center of his mass is directly in between those three points, and he has a vertical built up from there. So a pyramid is one of the strongest structures that the top player can have. So I need to dismantle that. How do I dismantle that? That's a good question. We're gonna to try to explore that. Um, if, like, if I have like a mid-range guard or a higher guard, I'm not gonna do much to affect his posture. The more vertical he is, the lower I need my guard to be. So I wanna to try to grab his butt with my legs here like this. Don't make it weird. But like when we get here like this, I grab lower and then I can start to uproot him better this way. Now, the problem then becomes he's got these two posts that he can reset his position, which is what he's gonna try to do. He's gonna try to use these to reinforce his structure. So I need to be able to take care of that as well. So you guys have probably seen this before, but I wanna have a little different take on it. I wanna cross grip here for the first thing, and I wanna get my, my hand on the sleeve here this way. And then I'm gonna slip underneath and get this reinforced double grip like this, okay? Um, from here, I wanna break this grip. This is a really strong way to break this grip. Even if he's very strong on his grip, it's still, I can usually still bust his grip with this because I'm gonna raise my hips, I'm gonna pop my hips, and then pop my wrists too, this way, right? So even if he was hanging out strong, it, it usually gets the job done. If he's really strong and it doesn't get it the first time, usually a couple of them will, right? So you can just kinda of shake weight it out like that. Now, this is how I learned the technique, and then I'll explain why I don't do it this way. The way I learned this technique was to open this now, pull, and then wrap like this. Anybody seen this before? Okay. The problem I ran into, and it's probably a lack of understanding of anything, but it was that I would get there and I would go boom, you know, start to pull and he would pull back. 
right? Okay, so that's not happening. Um, then I learned a detail that like, well, if I pull him straight, we're just playing tug of war. And I assume everybody's stronger than I am. That's usually the case. So like, instead I'm gonna take it at a different angle and I'm gonna pull him with my legs, but when I bust this here, I'm gonna take it out this way. Now that's a little more effective. Now he's got to pull laterally back in. So it's got a, a funkier angle and it buys me more time to do this, right? So when I go here, this way, I'm going up on my side. I'm trying to put this hand behind my back, behind the back of my head, and I'm going up and turning this arm over. Both my knees are pointing this direction. What happens when I do that and I rotate my thighs, it dishes my hip out to the side. That way I don't have to plant my foot to shrimp out. I want to try, I typically try myself to avoid planting my foot on the ground from closed guard whenever I can, right? Now from here, if there's space, I'm going to punch up under that tricep, right? Now as I come back here, I can let go of that now and I'll bring this leg up nice and high and look where we are, okay? I'd like to take the time, if I can't reach this right away, here, I'd like to take the second to pass that to here this way. Man, you got some starch in there. <laughs> so when we get here now, I've got this overhook and this grip inside. Now, I usually can't get a thumb back here. That's another thing I learned on this technique, and I have a hard time getting that thumb, but there's usually always this little wrinkle, even if he has traps, there's usually that wrinkle. So I'm gonna go sticky hand and catch and then I'm gonna push my elbow toward his rib cage and I'm gonna keep pulling him into the choke with my legs, okay? So, without as much talking here, I wanna cross grip, so, dish underneath. What if he's too tight here, there's no space? That's a good question, glad you asked that. <laughs> bump, bump your hips to start, right? Just keep bumping your hips, right? I think a lot of times people bridge when they should bump, you know? And a lot of times a violent shaking action is, is a little more effective. So now we get here, Again, low grip around his butt, and I'm pulling him forward as I bust this grip and I pull this out this way, right? Now as we come back, we go here. And then I punch this thumb, like I'm, I've got a knife here stabbing myself in the stomach, and then I'm gonna bring this up. I'm gonna pass that collar over the lapel to this hand, and I've got a strong grip here. Huge important detail is that I'm on my side, right? If I need to, I can dish out even more but I want to be way up on the side. If I'm directly underneath him, he's going to get his arm back. He's not going to get his arm back if I'm on my side. Okay. And I get this little wrinkle here, push in. Don't push into his face, unless you just don't like the guy, then that's fine. But push here toward his rib cage. Okay, does this make sense? Yep. All right. I can't remember if this was the first thing I wanted to show or not, but this is where we're starting. So I just got to deal with it at this point. Fessy lying. Yes, sir. <laughs> uh, you're over with. How do I accomplish that? Again, from here, I can put my foot on the floor and hip out. That's fine. Um, I can accomplish the same thing generally by just rotating my quads and scooting my butt out. This allows him less opportunity to be able to step over my leg or trap my leg, right? Now, once that happens, I want to bring my guard up higher here because I can, because his posture is broken, right? Does that make sense, guys? Okay. So that's that's kind of where we're getting to with that. Now, um, just to make it more fun, though, uh, let's go ahead and add a second thing, right? And let's look at it a different way. Let's say that if I do get that position well, 
you know, and I don't square back up to him and I've got myself off to the side and all that stuff I just said. And then, um, but he, then he starts to defend. How is he going to defend then? Right? Well, let's see. So here, now how is he going to defend? Well, he can try, yes, he can try to do that. Now, look at the difference now when, whenever he's squared up and got his arm out versus if he wants to get it out now, he's got a kind of limp arm. That's a pretty bad prospect for him because he's really cutting a bad angle for his arm this way. So this is where like Kimuras and, and Omoplatas and stuff are gonna exist, right? His other option though, the one I wanna look at first, is what if he just doesn't like the pressure of the choke and he wants to resist that? Oh uh, yeah, he's gonna fly like that. Yeah, yeah. So we're gonna play, you know how like when you would play tug of war and then like somebody let go of the rope on the other side? That's kind of the idea. When he's pressing on my arm this way here, I'm gonna be like, oh, you're so strong. And he's like, I know. And then from here, as he pushes here, push, 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 boom, I collapse here. And then I air guitar here. Now, what's hard to see is here, so you guys might wanna see this detail. This hand that's in the collar here, as he pushes this way, and I collapse my arm, this hand's gonna come out and grab this sleeve, right? When I air guitar, I capture his elbow, tricep, tendon area like that, right? Now this foot, I wanna step up, and I wanna put his, this foot on my hip, and I wanna squeeze my thighs in a little bit this way here, right? Not a little bit, a lot, right? So I push, and I'm trying to put his elbow into my belly button this way, okay? Once that happens here, now I climb one, two, I wanna get that shoulder, right? And if I can cross, and capture that shoulder, well, this is pretty good, okay? Now, I might be able to get, that seems hard though. It might happen, because sometimes he'll try to pull out and he'll leave the arm behind, I can't do the straight arm. But like, if I can't get the straight arm here, then I wanna go here and pull his thumb to the floor instead. Yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah, it's gross. So, when we get here, this way, and I'm pushing here like this, and he's framing, and I'm like, ah, here. But again, you gotta get the commitment, okay? Before I can like manipulate where his grip goes, I gotta get him committed to that. This is my jujitsu and relationship advice. The more committed you get the person to you, the easier they are to manipulate. <laughs> so when we get here like this, don't tell my girlfriend. Yeah. When we get here and I push here, this way, okay? I catch, air guitar, push. Step in the hip, squeeze, thigh master, walk one, two, three, right? Why? This is strong, this is stronger, right? I try to pull his pinky toward me. He's too strong. Pull his thumb to the floor instead. Okay? Does that make sense? Are you, are you still holding the collar while you're grabbing the sleeve? No, no. Is it the hand from the collar, like once, so I'm here, once this collapses, boom. Okay. Now, yeah, I'm going to show you. I want to keep him committed to the fence there. As he pushes, he pushes, 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 Now I got this. I can have him over here. I'm gonna put his elbow in my belly button. Right. I'm gonna step. One, and two, and look. And this is what I want to find with my leg. Three, and then climb it. Now I can maybe get this, but look, it's gonna run into me. So I'm gonna take his thumb to the floor. Oh, yeah, it's gross, right? Yeah. See what I mean? Right. Do it. Come on, yes. Come on, yes. Come on, yes. Big Danny. Oh, a lot of pressure, Chris. Yeah. <laughs> come on, Brian. Come on, Brian. Let's see, join the Brian. Coach Odell here. In front of my hip, like this one. Boom, right there, you see? 
Um Josh, Josh e Josh. Nathaniel e Clayton. O job, Nathaniel. Get tight there, Nathaniel. If I have a round hole, is to stick the round peg into the round hole, right? The square peg just won't go. That's too wrong, right? However, like a hexagonal or octagonal piece, you can smash it down in there, right? It'll work. You just gotta force it to go. And that's how some jujitsu is. It's not the best jujitsu. The best jujitsu is the round hole and the round peg together, right? But there's a reason why you need to be strong and fast flexible and have all the physical attributes. And I always recommend only fighting people smaller and weaker than you, right? That's number one. Don't fight bigger, stronger people, right? So always be the biggest, strongest, fastest. But um, save those attributes. Save those attributes for that afterburner, right? To really drive it home when you need it, right? So because like if you go into the match, like all guns blazing, the first thing that doesn't work, you're gonna be exhausted, right? So you, you need to save that. You need to be as efficient as possible with every single movement, right? You need to have the best stamina and then save those reserves and everything else. But anyway, I'm getting off on a tangent. What are we talking about? Um, so when we get here, <clears throat> say I can't quite get, um, I get on my side and he's just too massive, right? Or his gi's too small, because everybody wears small gi's now, right? I know I get mine like a half size too small so people can't grip me. But when we get here, I'm like, eh, it's just not happening. Well, don't stay here forever trying to get it, right? Because um, there's going to be a, a better opportunity, hopefully, from here, okay? Now, um, first, let's say that I do. We're going we're gonna to back up in a second. But first, let's say I do get it. But the problem is I get here, and I'm doing everything. And it's pretty good. We go here. He resists. I get the sleeve here uh, this way. I'm like, okay. But then I'm like, eh. that's not happening, right? Well, okay, um, let's go to something else instead, right? So instead, I'm gonna take this hand and I'm gonna shove it through and we'll just hop over to triangle, okay? Because it's obviously right around the corner, you guys are already seeing it, right? The thing is though, is just being able to make that switch, right? So, you know, I'm from Kentucky, so uh, we have what we call the, the Kenny Rogers principle and it's no one to hold them and no one to fold them, <laughs> right? Yeah, um, but I got a better one. The, um, I was up in Ohio, and these guys had this great analogy. They call it the pet cemetery. They might hurt. So, like, <laughs> the pet cemetery is when it's time to let that thing that you love die. You gotta let it die because if you don't, you try to keep it alive. It's gonna come back and it's gonna kill you, right? And I'm like, God, that's the best analogy ever. So, like, <laughs> so don't don't do pet cemeteries, right? No pet cemeteries. So when we get here, um, shout out to North Coast and JJ for that. So when we get here, this way, right? There's other options that, that exist, right? So we've got the choke, we've got the sleeve grip here to this little weird mirror lock kind of thing here like this, right? We have the ability to push through, boom, and look for the triangle now, right? I'm not gonna go explicitly into the triangle, you guys can just kind of figure that one out on your own, right? But I wanna go even worse case scenario to where I'm not getting this grip at all, right? So. A big part of it here is like, if that grip is not working, this is not helping me very much at all, then I'm gonna switch to this kind of a shoulder pin idea. And this is kind of where I was trying to get to this whole time. So we're gonna go ahead and fast forward a bit. Once I did this wrap, I'm like, okay, this isn't feeling very strong. I don't think I'm gonna get a lot with the grips done right now. Instead, I'm gonna hug through my own leg and here, this way. Now, here's what's powerful about this, and this is also called Williams guard, right? So Sean Williams popularized this one. So I'm hugging around my own leg and I'm framing 
This hand is palm facing me, this one's palm facing away. This is my John Cena hand. So when we get here this way, I'm framing here like this. You guys see it? So when we get here, now, I, this helps keep them off center. Again, if he squares up, he can get his arm free better. But this is gonna help keep him off center here this way. Um, if I wanna keep him this way and I feel like he's gonna frame on me, then what I can start to do here is as he starts to frame, I wanna get this leg inside and try to get that foot to his hip. So that's gonna help. So that's the posture a little bit here. Right, go ahead, posture here. Yeah, like this, okay? So this helps keep it a little bit, right? So essentially this is like a baby rubber guard, right? It's like rubber guard for less flexible people. So from here now, we have different options that we can look to explore. Right? Again, if he brings that hand inside, we're gonna go triangle, we're gonna back up first though. And once I get here, one of the first things I'm gonna to look to do, because it's hard for him to keep this really strong grip here, one of the first things I like to check for is I wanna switch my grip. I hold the frame as long as I feel like I need to get control. And then I'm gonna switch my hands to the other side and pull tighter, hug here. And now I'm gonna slide down here and trace his wrist and then I want to get here and push his pinky to his head, right? And we're going to get that two more here, right? Like that, okay? So again, we've gotten to this position. We can do it the same way, right? We can do this whole arm wrap thing boom, to get here, okay? Just for funsies, we'll uh, look at another way we can get here too, like if we're here and I sit up to hip bump sweep, right? And then as we hip bump sweep, he tackles back into me. Right, and go straight back into it here, okay? So either way we got here, this is the frame first to control the position. Now I'm gonna switch the grip to the other side of my knee. I'm gonna hold tight, slide down here, and I'm gonna push his pinky to his, his ear this way. If you just really don't like the guy, you can go wrist lock instead, Ooh. okay? Depends on how much you want friends, right? Um, questions about this one, okay? So we're skipping ahead a little bit, or fast forward a little bit, just going to do this like shoulder pin Williams style guard. Okay? Let's try this a few times. Guys, one, two, three. Big Dennis smile. You can get it on me. <laughs> Big Chris. Chris. switch it because typically this is better right but here if we get to this now because I've already got his his arm isolated on this side if I just take this hand underneath his neck and I grab here right the choke happens when I just try to touch my elbow to my knee here that's a tight choke just with one hand and I still have this one free if he wants to do anything with this hand over here right so again we've gotten here right and this may be, like, the thing about this doesn't feel super threatening to him. I'm, like, sitting down here messing with this, right? And, like, this doesn't feel like much. And then once I start playing my, my shoulder rack like that, or shoulder pin, or William Scar, whatever you want to call it, I don't care. Here. And then we flop that over to here. So we're doing this piece by piece, right? And this is still strong. I still got his posture kind of broken down. Next, I'm going to take this here. I want to make that wedge in that frame and pass this here. So right here, it's already really bad. Like for him to try to turn and face me and posture up is a struggle already, right? But once he does that and he's like, oh, freedom, okay? Feels nice. Then when I go underneath and get a hold of that, now I push here, yeah, okay? So that's the first thing. I wanna look at the setup of it, getting to that grip, and then maybe getting that little short choke right here, right? Okay. Any questions about this? So colloquially, it's called a uh, uh, rubber guard, gi rubber guard, okay? Uh, it's not very creative, but uh, anyway, let's go try this, guys. If you have any questions, let me know. Ready, one, two, three. Yeah, you probably need to see this one. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Trying to face. 
I'm gonna let him stick his hand back inside. And now this is gonna come right under his neck. Yeah, this, um, I'm mainly monitoring this dip down here. The worst thing that can happen, uh, one of the, the bad things that can happen on this is the guy will just pass this, push this down and start passing it. Right? And that sucks. Like, I, 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 my first, my first match was like, I've been working on this, I was like, I don't want to do this. And I got all the way there, and I'm like, boom, I'm locked in. And it started passing my leg. But I was like, sorry. So if I get here and, and I make a step, I make an advancement, he's going to have three, only three potential energetic reactions. That's all that can exist. Technically, that can be a million different things, right? But three energetic reactions is all he can ever have. He can have direct opposition to the energy. He can acquiesce to the energy, right? Or he can stagnate. If he stagnates, I do whatever I want to do. So that one's out the window. So it's either just resist or go with, right? If he resists, that's typically the less, that, tip, that tends to be the less technical response. Going with the energy tends to be the more technical response because we're jujitsu people, right? We're enlightened. So whenever we get here and he has direct opposition, I need to have an answer for that in the chamber. I also need to have an answer in the chamber for what if he goes with the technique, right? Or if he goes with the energy. As long as I have those two energetic reactions, I'm ahead of the curve, at least by two steps, right? So this is, now this sounds great. Right? Because whenever we map it out like that, it's like, oh, this is an easy formula to follow and beat anybody in the world. Right? Um, the problem is, again, going back to that square peg round hole thing. It's like, I might not know, though. I might not know the answer. Right? And if I get there and I don't know the answer, I'm going to have to figure it out on the fly. So that's a problem. Right? And because there's thousands and thousands of techniques and little changes and variations and manipulations on the technique. But as long as I break it down to like, those are gonna be the energetic reactions I'm gonna encounter typically, then I can simplify the process a little bit theoretically, right? Okay, so having said all that stuff, let's get back to this position. And again, however you made this happen, you got this E out, you push this open like this here, you tangled your foot up in it so that whenever the referee walks by and he's like, oh, that's, I gotta fix that. And then he hands you the grip, <laughs> and you're like, thanks ref, and so now, from here, this way, right, we get to this. And this is a bit of a camping spot here. What I mean by that is like, I can kind of see what his reaction is gonna be. I might be able to go back and get that same Kimura that I got before, right, maybe. I don't have quite as tight of a grip because I'm not pulling my, my uh, knee down this time, but maybe it's here, right? Um, maybe also like he's not, he's just not gonna like try to turn and face and he's gonna stay where he's at. And so then that's gonna maybe start to give me access to a homoplata, right? Now here's the thing I wanna share about omoplata on this one here. Um, when I learned omoplata, and I, I still see omoplata taught like this a lot, and it's, it's right, it's absolutely right. I wanna show one that's maybe a little righter. Though. So when we get here, and I start to go omoplata here, the thing about having this grip is that now, once I get through, and I start to set up my omoplata here, right? What's better than me just tossing this arm over, because this is how we learn omoplata a lot of times, right? I secure the hand, I go here, and I start to sit up, and I start to walk away, right? Well, if instead, from here, right, I hold this and switch the grip, right? So I go here instead. The, the power of this is that if I go here and I try to pull, compare this pull to this pull. See what I mean? So like, if I go here and this way instead, now, as I start to sit in, and I pull them over, right? This is, a, this is pretty strong, okay? So now as I go to sit up, now before I actually go in for like that, the traditional omoplata shoulder lock here, look at how that's jacked his shoulder up, right? So now, I wanna come through here this way, right? So that before I start to sit up and then have to deal with him rolling out and all that mess, right? Just go here instead, right? Get like the wings of justice, right? So we go here, or we can come up and finish, right? But either way, like once I hook this arm, it's, it's a lot stronger, or sometimes it's stronger, right? So what are we doing now? We're getting here, we got our same kind of double guard set up, right? He's not wanting to square up. So if he doesn't square up and he's staying at this angle here, then now I wanna push, I clear my knee out, 
I'm using this as a frame, right? I'm gonna switch for a second, come across, and I'm gonna scrape my leg out. Mm -hmm. On plata, I like to keep his elbow captured, so once I pull my leg out, I'm gonna keep my knees pinched here. I don't wanna to try to set up into omoplata before he's as flat to the floor as I can get him. Does that make sense? If I sit up right now, he's just gonna somersault, right? Or he's gonna dive, or he's gonna do some kind of resistance, right? So if instead now, from here, right, I wanna drive down this way, and now, as I go to sit up, now we can start pulling him over this direction, right? And then once I get that shoulder up, now I've got really good control, okay? Once his shoulder's down, I know I've got a, a, a good attack for this near side shoulder, and then also potentially for the straight arm over here, right? There was a match with, um, I think it was Michelle Nicolini and Tammy Musumeci, like several years back, I think maybe 2016, 2017. And um, I think that this was the position. And Michelle Nicolini got Tammy Musumeci like that and just folded her arm completely backward the other direction. Right, and the problem though was like that, uh, yeah, uh, Tammy was up by points at that time. And so like, even though her arm's just like flopping in the breeze over here, she's like, she's not tapping because she's winning, right? The problem then though, she couldn't post with that arm so she gets swept. So then she still loses on points. You know, it's like, okay. and has a broken arm on top of it. So that kind of sucked. That has nothing to do with what we're doing right now. Because <laughs> we to think about it. You know, it's a gross match if you want to go back and watch it. Yeah. So um, anyway, let's look at this omoplata variation. Any questions though about the setting up of the position up to here that people are having trouble with that I haven't addressed yet? So you don't yes. you don't care whether or not like you cross your feet on the omoplata. Um, I I prefer personally to cross my feet. Right. So the, typically the two ways that I'll see people do omoplata, they'll either figure four this way, um, or you go kind of ice pit version, where you cross at the ankles and you push here. The, what I like about this is that this is the one pushing the shoulder down, this one comes across, reinforces it, and I drive straight through, so it pitches their shoulder forward to the mat. Now, um, it, as a, if I do that here before I start to sit up, it controls their, it, it hinders their ability to roll out, right? So I like to cross my feet here. Now, once I come up and I want to finish, we're gonna S curve, right? Like traditional home bottom. But um, that's my preference. So, oh, yeah. Yeah. All right, let's try it, guys. One, two, three. So if I look at a standard triangle choke, it's two parts of my leg, one part pressing their own shoulder into their their, uh, their neck on the other side. The buggy choke's the same thing. It's just the bottom side triangle. Now, the thing that makes it weird is that it's coming from a bad position, right? But you know, what's a bad position? A bad position is like a cautionary tale that we tell white belts, right? That's, that's a bad position. If, if you understand what makes a good thing, a bad thing, a, an advanced thing, a basic thing, or whatever, and you, you get the concept, the principle, the rule behind it, then later on you can break the rule. What's the, I always mess this up, so I'm gonna try not to mess it up. But you, you learn the rules as a professional so you can break them as an artist, right? That's, I think that's how it goes. You can look it up later, it's Picasso. But like, that's the idea, right? Once you understand the rule deeply enough, you can manipulate that rule to benefit you, right? I mean, more time, I, I, I can't remember how many times I've been choked out, that's a, a side effect of being choked out, but like, most of the time it came from me advancing or establishing a good position, right? What's like the, the top chokes that, that tend to choke people unconscious? They tap too late on. Baseball bat choke would be up there loop chokes, right? But yeah, some of you guys in here probably falling asleep to those, right? And it's because you're advancing position, you're like, oh, I'm doing good, right? First time I ever got choked out, it's the most embarrassing moment of my life, um, I was in front of that guy, and, um, and uh, Jorge on Gracie, and Hoist Gracie, and some other people that I, just, I wouldn't want to be choked out in front of. And it started because I was a white belt, and I hooked up with this guy and he shot his hands into my collar, almost knocked me out from the force of it. And I'm like, oh man, so I went back and pulled my guard because I'm in a better position now. So he's gotta let go of the choke because I'm in a good position. You can't choke me in from inside my guard. That's against the rules, right? So then I wake up. <laughs> and, I, and like, Hoist's wife at the time, her, his wife has my feet like this and I'm like, this here, and the Hoist is standing here 
Grandmaster Avery was like over here looking at me, and I'm just like, okay, this is hell. I, I, I died. <laughs> and this is what hell feels like. So, oh, man. all right, that was a tangent. I apologize, but um, what was the point? Good positions, bad positions, things like this, right? These are fundamental things taken to the extreme. That's how we get advanced moves. An advanced move is just what gets the job done at the time, depending on the person and the circumstance, right? Mirambolo was created for that reason. It was because like this was the easiest way to take this person's back because they're so advanced and they're, they're, they're seeing everything else and this is the thing that's gonna manipulate and get to this position. So, um, having said that, let's look at this here. When you get here, right? And we're gonna go back to this kind of government guard setup. Again, looking at like different things that I can use to set this up, where I was, I was talking to my friends in the corner here, when we get here and I'm playing like a collar sleeve kind of thing, and I'm like looking to pummel inside here like this, and I push this through, boom, like that, right? Now, once we come through now, I might have access to it here. So that's another way that we can possibly get access to, to getting that piece of material that we need, right? Once I have this here, and I start to go to my, my little camping position here, um, and he starts to square back up to me, right, all in here. What is he gonna do, because we didn't address this yet, what's he gonna do when I get here to resist this choke? Yes. He's got two arms left, right? He's still got two arms to defend with, and those are gonna be his two most common responses. So this might be one, right? He may go one or the other. If he brings this one in first, here, I'm gonna come across, because he just gave me his arm, right? So I'm like, thanks. So I'm gonna grab here on the sleeve, and I'm gonna pull this across, and he just made it worse, right? Because a couple reasons. Now, it's a bravo choke, right? Bravo, not bravo. With bravo choke here, this way, I can get finished this way maybe, or come up, get the material again, or my own pant leg, and it's a very tight choke. If for some reason I'm not getting it, well, he just gave me access to get his back, right? So that's like, that's a great way for him to defend for me. Right, so we get here, right? I get my material, oh, here, these squares, where I square for him, we go here, I lose it, I get it back, here. Once I get a hold of this grip, I go boom, like this here, and he brings that hand in to defend now. Because as soon as he does, I was ready for it, right? So I bring this across. I might be able to just punch and pull and get the choke, okay? That's how Bravo choke typically works. Or the material is there, or my pant is here, right? Or none of those are working because he's too massive in here. So I let this go and I start to climb. If I'm gonna climb to his back, I'm gonna let this pop off, boom, post on my elbow, throw my arm over here. Get the lat on this side, or just get the material because there's a lot of material there now. And then I'm gonna hop up and start taking the back off of here, okay? Does this make sense? Questions? No? So this is the prior setup before we did that omoplata thing. And now we're looking at getting that bravo choke, right? Or the back tape. Let's try this a couple times. Got you ready? One, two, three. Oh, that's 